Hello! Welcome to the Experimental Photographer. This video is in the genre of light painting, mostly. Fiber optics. This exotic tool is pure black magic when combined with long exposure photography. With a fiber optic brush, we can create surreal effects like spider webs made of light, wispy smoke effects, and we can also use it to add a specular bouquet to our low light photos and light painting. For studio work or more practical photography, we can use it in a low light setting to add phantom spotlighting to a scene, which can either create a subtle surreal feel to your photography, or it can have the effect of making objects appear as if they are glowing. Okay, here we have fiber optics. I'm sure everyone here has seen these fiber optic lamps. You can buy in stores. Um, and basically what fiber optics are, are these um, thin strands of either acrylic or plastic. And they have the ability to transmit the light through the length of them, as you can see, with minimum distortion. So uh, whatever light you put through one end should come out just about the same on the other end. And you can see there's a small amount of bleed coming from the edge of this one. And here we have manufactured brushes. You know, the manufactured ones, they go for, I don't know, $25 or so US. And they work well. I mean, you know, they're well constructed, they don't come apart on you. This is a standard fiber optic brush here. As you can see, it's basically the same as the lamp, except the end is, looks like the tips have been frayed to scatter the light. And this one, as you can see, it bleeds a certain amount of light from the sidewall of the uh, fiber optics, which kind of limits what you can do with this brush. And here we have a black fiber optic brush here. And this is the real gem. This one is actually clear in the middle. You light it up. It's not black, but it's clear. But what makes it different is the, the, the surface, the side of the, um, the fiber optics is coated. So no light escapes through the side. It all comes right out the tip there. And this one is is the real gem here. You can do all sorts of wacky stuff with this one. So if you already own one of these lamps, or if you're just looking to go the cheapest possible route, between 10 and 15 bucks on Amazon, um, then you can totally use one here. In fact, you could use it exactly how it comes, except the only problem is you'll be stuck using the colors that it comes with and the brightness. Mine only goes between, it only strobes between the colors. Um, and it has this other strange mode, <laughs> vibrate. Not quite sure what that's for. But anyway, or you could most likely break it apart and create your own fiber optic brush out of it. I haven't done that yet, but I imagine it's not too difficult. So whether you build your own fiber optic brush or purchase one, you will still have to power it with a light source. And any portable light source should work. Here we have keychain lights. They work just fine. As you can see, they come in a sort of colors. Every color imaginable. Or you could use a regular flashlight. I have a small one here. You can hold it on with your hand. That works okay. Or the best option would be to buy yourself a universal connector. Um, I always recommend that people buy these. They um, connect right to a flashlight. Like that, most flashlights. And then from there, you can connect a range of light painting toys and goodies. Uh, just uh, Google search light painting universal connector 
and you should get some options. I believe they go for around $15-$20 a piece. If you're looking to add some color to your tool, then we have a few options here. If you're on a budget or if you don't want to drop any cash and you just want to tinker, any colored plastic should work. Kids toys, packaging, this here was actually created from a juice bottle and it makes a really pretty green. And you can see I cut it to fit over my flashlight. Uh, another option would be just to buy some. Here's a manufactured one. This one is designed to fit a universal connector, which goes onto the uh, flashlight there. You can see, orange. And another option is you can buy your own colored gels. These are designed specifically for photography. You see, they look like that. This pack is actually kind of expensive. I think it was uh, $25 US. But you can see it comes with lots of colors. And, you know, it has like 40 or 50 gels in there, which lasts quite a long time. And what I do with these is I actually cut them to fit inside this PVC fitting. This is a three quarter inch PVC fitting. I think it costs about 50 cents. As you can see I cut the gel to fit and just glued it in there and that also fits right on the universal connector pretty blue it's almost identical to the manufactured one one other thing you can do with these gels is uh, you can save the little chips like I've done here and just sprinkle them inside there sandwich them between the light and the brush and Kind of gives you a random colored effect, which looks nice. Okay, I'm going to do a series of quick demonstrations. I'll, first I'll describe the technique briefly, and then uh, we'll do an actual photograph so you can see the real results from what I'm doing. So this first demonstration, I'm going to use a standard fiber optic brush. If you recall, this is the one that um, leads light out the side. Can't do too much with it, but it's really good for making smoke. So that's what we're going to do. So for the smoke technique, I like to grab the brush kind of like that, put my fingers in it, if you can see that. This way it spreads out the filaments. Then I kind of, you know, twist it like that and move it around. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically smoke out the background, <laughs> so to speak. Just like that. I have my camera set here to uh, 25 seconds, uh, F9, ISO 100. Okay, here we go. Make sure to get the whole background there, kind of go a little farther than you need just to make sure. Now I'm just going to keep this thing going for the full 25 seconds. Okay. All right, it's a nice smoke effect there. Okay, this time we're going to do uh, like a water effect. So I have the same standard fiber optic brush. So I've adjusted my camera a little bit, brought it in tighter, and uh, since, since we're going to be close up, I've reduced the exposure to 15 seconds at F9 ISO 100. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get this thing moving quickly across the thing, across the keyboard there. Just like that. Okay. Let's do it. Notice I turn the flashlight off after every run. That kind of keeps it uh, cleaner of an effect. So it pays to have a flashlight with a nice responsive uh, button. All right, water effect. Okay. 
Next, we're going to get into some black fiber optic goodness. If you recall, black fiber optic brush is the one that is coated on the sidewall, so light is only emitted from the tips of the brush. Because of that, we can do some really cool stuff. We're going to do a spiderweb effect, and I do say that loosely. It's a surreal kind of look. And to up the ante a little bit, I've added a purple gel on there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to swipe the keys like this. And I'm still at uh, 15 seconds. I've opened up the aperture a little bit to f8 at ISO 100. See how far down this keyboard I can get in 15 seconds. Oh, that's it. All right. Okay, next I'm going to use this black fiber optic brush and I'm going to swipe it across my face. It's a very popular thing to do with black fiber optic brushes. It creates a very um, futuristic, surreal look. And for this shot, I've Sprinkled some chips of blue and red gel in front of my uh, flashlight lens. And for this shot, for this uh, technique, you want your model to stay very still. It's, uh, it's kind of hard because it does tickle. All right. Get my game face on. And for this shot, I reduced the exposure to five seconds. We're going to try some trick studio lighting. The impossible lighting scenario. And for this, I am going to grab the fiber optic brush like this with my fist. And the objective is to keep it turned away from the camera so the camera doesn't see the actual tips of the fiber optic brush. And as long as I keep my hand moving, fairly quickly out of the scene, the camera won't pick up my hand because it's uh, fairly dark. Okay, let's have a go. I'll put the brush in here and light up the inside kind of really quick. Why not? All right. The glowing pot. For one final demonstration here, we're going to use it to create a specular bouquet in, in our uh, photograph. And I've chosen to use my wife's cross collection as a subject. You can see I've got the fiber optics set up on a tripod stand. You're going to want to keep it pretty still. So so um yeah just make sure it's uh not moving around when you're taking the picture and also you want it pointing upwards so it kind of fans out i have it really close to the camera i'm shooting about 50 millimeters right now i find that 50 millimeters is kind of a sweet spot for bouquet and i'm just going to do a two second exposure here when you, when you point the fiber optics directly into the camera like that, it's, uh, it's very bright to the camera. So you either have to turn down your flashlight a lot or reduce your exposure values. Okay, quick shot right here from Bokeh. I'm going to use a keychain light to light up the cross area here. All right. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Beautiful.